Welcome back to The Quilted Story, where every quilt tells a story narrated by you through fabric and thread. My name is Kathleen, and I'm a professional quilt instructor and machine embroidery educator. But at the end of the day, I'm just a girl with a sewing machine, and sometimes I get lucky and I make something fabulous. My channel is all about quilting, machine applique, and machine embroidery. And I'm hoping that today you will find something on my video that will inspire you to get that machine out, turn it on, and make something special just for you. Today is episode number three. But before we get started, let me remind you that on my YouTube channel, there are my, there is a couple other videos that are not like regular episodes. One of them is my studio tour, and the other one is a little snippet of a quilt that I made that is actually hanging in my studio and I didn't want to take it off the wall in order to promote its pattern. That quilt, oh well let's let's start about the um, the studio tour. It's actually done in two parts, one and two. Try to watch those in chronological order because it'll make a lot more sense and if you have any questions regarding my studio or how I set things up or where I might have gotten something, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you right away about it. I'm excited about my studio and I'm hoping that you will see something in the way I organize mine to get your setup done just right and perfect just for you. That studio is, I do believe, number six. I know it will not be my last studio because even though as much as I enjoy that, my large studio that I have today, which by the way is above a three car garage, I love it because it's very spacious, I'm very open, I have a lot of room and I have a lot, I have my studio set off or sectioned off into different aspects of my quilting and embroidery world. I love it. A lot I really really do but I know that I will downsize eventually and I'll probably be back into a large bedroom once again but that's okay because I feel that at the end of the day you could be creative in any space when I first started quilting and doing any kind of sewing I started off in the corner of a bedroom and on my on my grandmother's old sewing machine cabinet I, I had things stashed in boxes, in, in totes, under beds, in closets, in the back of rooms, and anything, anywhere I could find somewhere to stash my, my stuff and all my supplies. Then I went to a kitchen table, which is not much different than working in the corner of a bedroom, but it still worked. I was able to be creative and I loved it so much. I created a lot of clothes for my children. I made quilts, I made curtains, I made all kinds of things that brought joy to me in my life. So that was studio one, two, and three. Studio number four was actually above a two-car garage. It was a bonus room. We had moved to South Carolina that year and it was a nice space, but I also shared it as a spare room for our incoming guests because we lived in South Carolina, we were the halfway point between our hometown in Cleveland, Ohio and Walt Disney World. So we were like Motel 6. So that, that was fine during that time. Our kids were young and, and we loved having all the company. Not that I don't like having company now, I do. But um, so I had that studio and I, like I said, I did share that with a spare room of sorts. We had a we had a pull-out sofa that we could use if we had incoming guests. So I would just put a few things away. I had a lot more space because it was above a three car or two car garage. So that worked out pretty well. Then we downsized slightly and I moved to a larger bedroom. And I love that one too also because it it had everything that I needed at my fingertips and I was able to retrofit most of the things that I had in my larger studio, I still could retrofit them in my large bedroom that, what, that I was using as my studio in that home. But on to studio number six, which is the one I'm living in right now, and that is above a three car garage. 
I love it so. There is no more of a special place in my home than my studio. I love it. I cannot say enough about it. However, like I said, I know I'm going to downsize one day. But it's okay because right now I'm enjoying it. And when that day comes, we will embrace it and move on. So I hope that you will see something in that studio tour that will inspire you to set up your little corner of the room. If it's a corner of a room, if it's a closet, if it's the back side of your family room, if it's your kitchen table, it doesn't really matter. Just get started somewhere because that's what it's really all about. So the set, like I said, the second video that you may not know about on there is just a quick little one minute snippet about the American Blessings wall hanging quilt that I have hanging in my studio. And you will also see that at the introductory of my part one studio tour. That is a quilt that I designed, oh gosh, I think it's probably been about 14 years. And I love it so much because I'm very Americana. I like, I like those kind of um, projects. And that is done with a log cabin. It is completely paper pieced. It is only 40 inches square. So, but you can make yours any, any size you want because that pattern, which is available in my Etsy shop, is, it, it comes in three different sizes. And once again, it also includes the fabric recipe cards that tell you exactly what size your fabric pieces need to be in order to fill that section of the paper piece pattern. So if you have a moment and you're inspired by that quilt, check it out on my channel or on my, um, in my website, geez, Pete, it's in my, I'm a little tongue tied to it today. It's on my website. You can read all about it on my, on my website. Just punch in the word American blessings in the search button area up on the upper right. Or you can go to my Etsy shop and you can look at the pattern. There's a bunch of pictures there in the listing. I will link both of those down below in the show notes. But let's move on to episode three. Today's program is going to be all about fabric salvages. What's a fabric salvage, you say? I'm going to tell you. Okay. Today's program, like I said, is all about fabric salvages. And when you buy a piece of fabric... Most people don't realize that on the edge of that fabric, let me show you, is some writing. And you can see on there, this particular fabric is Too Cute to Spook by me and my sister designs for Moda. And as you can see, they print out the name of it and who designed it and the manufacturer. It's all printed off on the salvage. And the salvage is, you, oh, you always want to cut the salvage off when you make something with your fabric. So what I do is before I get started with a project, I bring, I press off my fabric and then I take the, the self, or I take it to my cutting table or my cutting station, and I will go ahead and I will cut off that salvage. And I'll show you what one looks like. Now, this is a different fabric because I haven't, I, I have the whole line of the Too Cute to Spook, but I have not cut into it. So I have not taken the salvages off of it, but I will pretty soon because I'm getting something started. Okay, here's a salvage that has been cut off. And as you can see over here, I've left, I cut off the salvage plus one half inch to three quarters of an inch, depending on the actual design of the print. Because sometimes I feel like I need that three quarters of an inch and sometimes I'm okay with a half an inch. So I just go with whatever, you know, suits my fancy, but I do kind of lean towards that three quarters of an inch. And that will allow me, when I make something with my salvages, because that's where I'm going with this. I like to make things with my salvage and when I do, I want to have not just the salvage with the writing on it, I want to be able to have some of that print from the fabric. Now, along with the name of the manufacturer of the fabric and the manufacturing textile um, manufacturer, the manufacturer like Moda, 
um, they will also sometimes include, and mostly often more than not, they will also include these little fabric color dots that are on the selvage. And that is like a nice reference. I tell my students to look at that because that will give them an idea of what color, it will tell you the colors that are in the actual fabric textile. And if you're trying to match something up to go with that particular fabric, just look at those dots and you will be able to, you know, find a color in the, in the quilt shop or even in your stash that will go with that particular fabric. So it has a plethora of information on that, on that salvage. And I tend to cut just the salvage that has the side that has just the writing on it, just like this. But you can cut both sides if you want. Um, I make things with my salvages and I'm gonna show you the kind of things that I do make. And I like to have the writing and the, the color code circles on there and the manufacturer information and all that. That's what I, I wanna see in my projects. But let's get started and show you some of the things that I have made with my salvages. The first thing I wanna show you today is, let me bring it back a little bit, is it's a composition notebook cover and I filled it with salvages. I started on the bottom and I went all the way up to the top and then I added them the other direction so that I could do it on the, on the binding, you know, the, where it folds. And then if you turn it around, it's the same thing on this side and then the salvages all the way up. And I just took this from my stash. These were all salvages that I took off of oodles of fabric over the years. And I'll show you how I organize those. But I just made, I like this composition notebook because I have all my little notes in there. And I made the cover come around. Let me, let me show you the inside. My cover comes all the way around and then this thing, this notebook just comes you, you know, you can replace the notebook and you, you have the same out exterior cover that you made. And it has like a little um, pocket here that you actually stick the notebook in. And I can also stick little notes in there too, if I want to, you know, save something. So it's kind of a, I like it because it's a nice size. I take, I keep all my notes in there. This is what I keep all my running lists of the fabric lines that are being released in any given year. That's one of the things that I do. I also have little like ideas. I put all my little ideas. I like to write things down, even though we're in the computer age, I like to write things down. So I'll put everything, I'll use it like a diary. And I put things in there that um, maybe I'm inspired to do in the future or whatnot. I even put my Christmas gift list in there. So like if I'm making a Christmas gift for somebody, it's in this notebook. So pause off, right? Okay, so that's that's the first thing I wanted to show you. The second thing is a mini composition notebook, and it's basically the same thing. It's just a mini version, and I just made a cover. And wouldn't that be cute in your in your purse or your bag or whatnot? Sometimes you just like to have a little something that you can you know take notes. So that was that's another little simple project that you can do with your with your salvages. Now when I am, I don't just sew the salvages together. I start off with a piece of stabilizer and I actually, I usually use Decker Bond and because Decker Bond is fusible on one side and I will press that little salvage and I build, I sew it on when I put the next piece on top. So if you look at this one, like I'll start on the bottom. Let's see if that makes sense. I'll start like on the bottom and I'll put that piece on and I'll fuse it really carefully with just the tip of my iron. So I'm not touching my iron to the rest of the fusible um, Decker bond. And then I add the next piece on top, just overlapping slightly. And then I stitch right on that edge because the salvage will not fray. So you don't have to worry about, you know, raw edges of any kind. And then you just, basically you're making a piece of fabric with salvages and then you're turning it into a project that you're making like this little notebook cover or my composition notebook cover. Now, another thing that I have made is I've made a ton of little pin cushions. These are great memory ones. Like if I used a line for someone's quilt that I maybe made and donated or I gave as a gift, 
I will make a little pin cushion to remind me of that quilt that I made. And I just, as you can see, I just use a bunch of different scraps of blues to make the back cover of it. And once again, I did sew that front onto Decker Bond. So, and this one is just filled with this just little pillow because I don't use it as a pin cushion, even though it, I mean, I could use it as a, like a little, you know, like a little pillow or something, but this one is filled with fiberfill. Um, but nowadays I, I mostly fill mine with either the crushed walnut shells if I'm using it as a pin cushion, or I'll use the, um, the rice because if I'm not going to use it as a pin cushion, just because it is cheaper to do that. Now the next item that I've made, and I like to do this a lot when I make a quilt for somebody that maybe I've used, a, you know, I like to make scrappy quilts, so I've used a lot of different fabrics, and I'll keep the salvages off to the side and create a card that will correspond with the fabrics that I used for their particular quilt. So this quilt was actually a quilt I designed for my daughter called, um, I think that one was called Living in Pink and Green, the no, Pink and Lime Green Paradise or something like that. It's on my website. Just put in the word pink in my search thing and it will, um, it'll come up and talk all about that quilt. Um, but I used the salvages that were left over and made a card. I actually made a couple of them. So like, you know, it's just the way it was set on that Decker Bond. And then I adhered it to a piece of cardstock and then I sewed around the edge. So on the inside, all you see on, as far as sewing is that little bit of edge. And then I have plenty of room to like write a little message or something in there. So there's two of them that were done with the pink and the lime green fabrics that I used for that particular quilt. And then I had another one that was just, I was just going through my stash of salvages and I made a cute little birthday one that I'm going to use when I need a birthday card. But it's a great way to use up your, your salvages and it's very inexpensive to do. And um, so that's what I do. I save all my salvages and I make little things like that. It really just depends how big the salvage is or the part of the writing is to tell me whether or not I have enough to make that particular project. Because as you can see, I use a little bit longer pieces for, you know, this composition notebook, but I could use very, very short little pieces for these cards. So it really just depends what you're making. So I save them all because you never know where you can just piece in a little piece, you know, a little tiny part of the salvage here or there. Now, another thing that I made is one of these little keychains and it's just a regular little like acrylic keychain and I I'm I applied that salvage onto the Decker Bond and I did two pieces one for the back and one for the front and then this you just kind of crack it open slightly and then you just you know slide those those little panels that you make you're basically making panels and it makes and it's it's acrylic, so, you know, it's not going to get ruined or dirty or anything. So I thought that was really cute. And I think, I don't remember where I got these little acrylic, um, little like keychain things, but I think you can find them like on Amazon or any of the embroidery supply places, you know, just look around, do a little Google search and you'll be able to find something. If not this exact one, something very, very similar. So that's a great way to use really small ones. Cause you can see those are really small. So that's perfect for small ones. Now the last project I want to show you is just how you can take your selfages and put it in a quilt block. So this is, you know, like now this particular one is the beginning of a quilt that I'm going to make that I'm going to use all the different colored ones. Like I'm going to do a purple one. I'm going to do an orange one and a blue one, and a lime green one, and so on. And then I'm gonna put it all together. And I'll, the only thing constant in that quilt is going to be this background, and it's like a light, sketchy gray. So, but that's a great way to use smaller pieces of your salvages. And this one, these salvages, I actually sewed it onto paper like a paper piece pattern. 
and then, but I'm still evolving that. I haven't decided if I really like the way that looks or that that's working for me. So I'll let you know how that works out once I do a couple more, but I do like that. And it's a simple block so that you could get a lot of different salvages in there. So that's, that's another one. Now, people ask me, often ask me, how do I organize my salvages? And one thing, let me move this out of the way so that I can go on to the next thing. And on my big cutting station, if you if you watch my video about my um, my studio tour, you will see my big workstation. It is centered in the room, and on top of there, I have a basket. It's a good size basket. Let me come back some. See, it has handles. And I think I got this basket. Look how big it is. I got this basket at Hobby Lobby another 150 years ago. So, but you know, you can find baskets everywhere. So don't be, don't be worried about not finding something that'll work for you. But what I do is when I cut the salvages off the fabric lines, when, you know, on my workstation, I just stick them in here. And as you can see, I'm starting to fill this basket. Okay. These are the fabric lines that I've cut recently. And some of them are older fabric lines just in my stash. So, but that's what I do. I put them in here first. And then once this container gets full, and when I say full, usually it's overflowing, but then I go to my, what I call my salvage jars. Let me, let me try to get both of them in here at the same time. These are candy jars that I actually bought at Hobby Lobby. They're like jars with lids, they're good size. I think they're, I wanna say they're one gallon jars. And, but you can use any size, you know, you can use quart jars if that's the amount of room you have. I have a dozen of these, one for each color. I have an orange one, a yellow one, a red one, a blue one, a green one. And I even have one for what I call oddball salvages where it doesn't really fit in one color or another. So I just stick them in one and, and that label, instead of it saying orange salvages, it says oddball salvages. So that, I just bought 12 of them and I put six on one shelf and six on another shelf. And you will see that in my studio tour also. And I kind of explained that a little bit there too. But what I do is I, once I have them in that basket, I'll then color coordinate them into my different jars. And then that way, when I'm looking for something, a project, maybe I want to do a project in purple, I just pull the, pu the purple salvage jar off the shelf and I have all of them at my fingertips and I'm ready to go. So um, that's how I organize my salvages. It just helps keep things from getting crazy. And I've actually had some of my students give me salvages over the years and whatnot. And, um, and I've used a lot of them and I, I try to keep making things with them because you'd be surprised how fast you accumulate the salvages. Now, you, when I first started sell, saving the salvages, I used to put them in Ziploc bags. But when we moved, to, moved me to this studio, it was large enough for me to have these, what I call jars, salvage jars. So I had my daughter design some labels for them and they're cute, calorie-less candy jars. That's what I call them. They have no calories but they're very cute, kind of like having a candy jar in your studio. So that's just a way to display them. And it gives you something to visually look at in your studio. Now, now that we've talked all about the salvages, if you have any questions about salvages or maybe how to get started or anything like that, there is some information on my website. You can use the word salvage um, or fabric salvage in the search button and some, some of the blogs that I have written over the years about salvages will come up. But if you do have other questions beyond that, feel free to leave me a question or a comment down below. Now, the next part of my program today is going to be all about my, um, uh, some more um, about my new pattern releases. I had six new pattern releases this week in my Etsy shop. So let's get started on those. The first one 
is called Crazy Strings. It's these are all paper piece patterns. It is called Crazy Strings. And these are four blocks, okay? And the only thing constant in it is this center hot pink strip. Now, I designed this quilt about 14 years ago. And the quilt that corresponds with this particular block is called Tomorrow's Hope. It was written for a breast cancer patient. I have made two of these and donated them to cancer patients. And you can read all about those quilts on my website. Just put Tomorrow's Hope in the search button and all of those stories will come up. And there's some light reading there. So I hope you enjoy those stories about the quilts that I donated using this particular block. So this is called Crazy Strings. Once again, comes in three sizes and it includes the fabric recipe cards on my Etsy shop. And I'll link that down below also. So that's called Crazy Strings. Now the next one is called Strippy Squares. And strippy squares, here's, oh, let me go back a little bit. Here's four blocks. And this particular quilt was, or this, this particular block was designed to make a quilt for an ovarian cancer patient. And this, the quilt was called Teal Ribbon of Hope. So if you wanna read about who I donated that to, and what the finished quilt looks like. You can see that on my Etsy shop in the pictures that are on the listing. And you can also read all about it on my Etsy or on my website, thequiltedstory.com about this particular quilt. And that was called Teal, Teal Ribbon of Hope, but the block is called Strippy Squares. I have to refer to my notes because I have a lot going on. <laughs> So bear with me here, people. So anyway, this is a beautiful, I used all ovarian teal fabrics. I bought the whole line from, I want to say it was a Judy Rothermill um, fabric line back, oh gosh, it's probably been 12 years. I think it was like in 2007, 2008, and I bought every piece of the line so because I knew I was going to make a quilt eventually and I did and I donated it to a lady named Barb so it turned out really really pretty I was really happy with it so go and go look on my website and read all about that particular quilt but this is a fun block to make and it and it makes it it, it makes up really quick really it does and it's very accurate because you are paper piecing it so check that out that is now in my Etsy shop, Strippy Squares is the name of the block. So check that one out. That's number two. Now number three is what we call, this pattern is called Flying Geese Squares. This, this is actually four blocks, as you can see. And I actually took this pattern when I designed this pattern, I made a table runner and the table runner is called My Goose is Cooked. And it's because it's using flying geese. So I'm gonna show you that in a minute because I have that in my, in my stash. That's a table runner. But this particular fabric that I used for this one and the strippy squares, and there's two more that I actually use this particular fabric line is called Starflower Christmas. And I got this fabric from an Etsy shop called Honey Quilt on, on Etsy. She is, I don't think I can say enough fabulous things about her. The word fabulous in Minju, that's the name of the lady who owns the shop, Honey Quilt. Her name is Minju. She, is, she has got to be the most professional, sweetest person you will ever do business with in the fabric world. So if you are in need of some fabrics, check her out. She carries a ton of different fabric lines. And for some reason, I always tell her, we must be kin of some sort because I swear her tastes are exactly like mine. So I always go to her shop first and do my shopping. 
uh, because she's just so professional. I really, really like her. So check her out. I'll link that down below. This fabric line is called Starflower Christmas. And I did um, that one. Starflower Christmas was designed by Create Joy Project for Moda. And I did buy this this particular these particular pieces from from Honey Quilt on Etsy. So check her out because if she doesn't have this or all these pieces still today, she has something equally as beautiful and you can never go wrong with her fabrics. She is fast to ship. She beautifully packages her fabrics. She uh, always has free shipping over, I think it's like $35, which is not hard to do these days. So she has free shipping and she's just so professional. I really, really enjoy doing business with her. So check her out. I'll link her down below so you can check her out later. All right, so that's pattern number two and that one is called Flying Geese Squares. Okay, but before we go on to the next block, I want to show you that table runner. Now, this is just half of it, as you can see. See the other half. And I used a different fabric line. This fabric line is 150 years old. I know I'm exaggerating, but go with me here. But it's it's really old. It's a boutique line. I love it. I really, really do. I bought the whole line when it came out. And... Um, the name escapes me, but I'll see if I can find it and I'll link it down below. It's it's an older line, so you're not likely to find it unless you find it in somebody's stash, like mine. <laughs> but you're not getting mine, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I used, um, oh, uh, let's see, I used six blocks on each side, so 12 blocks I made, and then I just put some borders on it. And this fits really nice on my coffee table for like an everyday coloring, you know, because I use a lot of, um, uh, earth tones in my home. So this is a great one to, and I actually, if you look really close at that, I did a quilting technique called Aztec quilting and it's repetitive lines over and over. I used my walking foot and it gave it a really, really nice look to the, to the table runner. I've been doing that Aztec quilting. Um, oh gosh. It's kind of a, it's a technique I developed about 20 years ago. I know a lot of people do straight line quilting nowadays. It's gotten really popular, but I've been doing it for about 20, 25 years. But anyway, this one is, it's a great way to kind of practice that. But use your walking foot because it makes a world of difference. So that one, that, that particular pattern, and you can read all about her on my website also. And that is called, My Goose is Cooked. So check that one out because that'll be um, a nice a nice read also. So that is that one. Now the next one, the next pattern I have is called Square in the Triangles. And once again, I use that Starflower Christmas. This is a paper piece pattern now available in my Etsy shop. And it's a nice, simple block. It's a great way to get your feet wet with paper piecing square is called square in the triangles that one's that's what that one's called and it's a multiple square in a square and with them having the points it's a great way to be very accurate when you paper piece once again comes in five six and seven inches and also includes the fabric recipe cards so check this one out it's now available in my Etsy shop okay now, the next one is called Flying Geese. It's just a regular flying geese. I stuck the little block on my washboard, and it's a simple block. It does come in three sizes. It is now available in my Etsy shop. Let me show you the pillow that I made. Used Once again, used that Starflower Christmas from Honey Quilt. Okay, that's the block in singular form but this is the pillow front top. I made a pillow top using, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, 16 of those units. And it's a 20 inch square, but you can make yours bigger because this does come larger or smaller. 
you can make it bigger. You can make a, a bunch of these main blocks, these 20 inch square blocks, and then put them together and make a lap quilt or a bed quilt or, you know, a table runner, make it narrower, make it a table runner or, you know, a table mat, a square table mat, like, like some of those table mats. If you have a larger table, you could make a table mat like I did those patriotic ones last last on the last episode in episode two um that i use for my my foyer tables so you could just do a larger version you could do a smaller version use this that also comes in three sizes and it includes the fabric recipe cards that's just a regular flying geese i love doing my flying geese this way because it's 100 percent accuracy and i don't have to worry about those points and cutting them off and and whatnot and um it's just a, it's a fun pattern to do, especially if you want to use up scraps. You would just pick one fabric or multiple background fabrics and then every fabric from your, from your stash that you have left over in your scraps. So that's a great one to use up scraps. Now, the last pattern is called framed flying geese. And this particular, let's see, let's turn it this way. This particular block was designed for the quilt behind me. As you can see, that quilt is called Moving in the Right Direction. It's a play on lime greens. Of course, it's my lime green quilt. And as you can see, the flying geese are framed. And that's why this block is called Framed, framed Flying Geese. Comes in three sizes also. Now, if you're, if you're wondering or if you figured out that I have a lot of colored quilts, like different, you know, colors of the rainbow quilt, I, develop, I designed a line of quilts called Spectrum of Color about 15 years ago. And this is one of them. The lime green one is one of them. I have a yellow one. I have a red one. I have an orange one. I have a blue one. I have a purple one. And I have a pink one. There are seven in that particular um, spectrum of color quilt that I designed. And then I took all the scraps that were left over from all those different colored quilts and I designed two more quilts. One was Living in Candyland and the other one is Playing Twister with Squares. And you can read all about those quilts on my website. Just put in the word spectrum of color quilts and it will come up all these different blog posts that I have written about each one. And I show, I talk about usually, usually in each one of these spectrum of color quilts, I talk about how I pulled the fabrics from my stash, how I organized them in my containers, and then how I got started. And then the, you know, some, you know, snapshots of it along the way and then the finished product. So those are those are a complete line of, it's actually nine quilts because there's seven in the color line. And then all the scraps were combined together to make those other two spectrum of color quilts. And like I said, you can read all about those on my website. So check that out. I'll link that down below. Now, the last part of the show today is going to be my haul. So let's talk about the things that I bought. Now, first of all, let me show you before this is an older part of my haul but i'm going to show it to you because i use this star flower christmas that i talked about earlier for my projects so i wanted you to see the fabrics that i bought from that line are these not super beautiful i just love this color it's it's a great wintry look a great wintry mix so and this is star flower christmas by create joy Designs create, no, create joy project for Moda. And I did get that at Honey Quilt. I just love it. So I just wanted to show you that that's where those fabrics came from for those, for those um, particular new blocks. Now, is Halloween getting here quick enough for you, for you all? I love Halloween. You will see that in my upcoming shows. I do a lot of Halloween decorating, a lot of fall decorating, and I love Halloween fabrics. Now, the thing about Halloween fabrics is you must get them when they are released because if you don't, you're not going to get everything you need or you might not be able to get all that you want to buy from a particular line. So 
that is another reason why I studied the fabric line so I know when they're being released and when I need to purchase them. So this fabric line that I bought, and I just recently got it, I also got it from Minju on Honey Quilts, and the Etsy, on Etsy, her, her shop is called Honey Quilt. And this is called Too Cute to Spook. And it is by me and my sister, Formoda. If you have ever bought any fabrics that were designed by me and my sister, you know what I'm talking about. These gals are just absolutely, they're just phenomenal, ph ph phenomenal uh, with their fabric colors. The way they put things together is just, it's just pure goodness. I mean, you just cannot go wrong with this. I have bought lots of different lines from me and my sister from Oda, and I have not been disappointed in one piece. Every piece is better than the next and the next and the next. It's just every piece you pick, it's just, you can't go wrong. So I'm, I'm planning something super fabulous with this fabric line. I do believe it's 24, it, I got the half yard cuts and it's a 24 piece line. So I bought the whole line. I like the half yard cuts for me in particular because that all will allow me, that usually will allow me to make several projects with the, the complete line and, and still some little projects like my cards or something, you know, or a little, a little um, tote bag or a bag or whatever. If I want to, you know, zippy tote or something that I want to make for, you know, a gift or something. So that's called Too Cute to Spook by me and my sister for Moda. So check it out. I do believe Minju still has some of this and she even has like, you know, the pre-cuts like the jelly rolls and the layer cakes and whatnot. She knew when she got this, she sent me a note and said, oh my goodness, this is you to a T. She knew me and I've never met her in person, but I just know we would be the best of friends. Okay, enough on that. So I did buy two more pieces when I got that. I, I seen this new line just got released and it is called Candy Cane Lane by April Rosenthal for Moda. And I just bought two pieces because I like to do my finishing like I had showed you last year, our last episode on that USA. I use some fabrics for the backgrounds and stuff. So I bought these two plaids. One is black and red and one is red and green. And I, since I'm going to use them for finishing, you know, like the outside behind an embroidery or something, I bought two yard pieces. So I bought two yards of the red and two yards of the black. And this I also got from Minju on Honey Quilts on Etsy. And I'll link that down below. But this is called The Candy Cane Lane by April Rosenthal for Moda. And it, it is a whole line, but I only bought the two pieces because of what I'm going to do with mine. I had to resist because, you know, I could buy every mode of fabric ever manufactured and still not have enough. But, you know, I would not be able to get inside the studio door if I bought everything. So you will like this. This is really, it's a very, very bright Christmas color line. So if you're looking for something in particular for Christmas, check out that candy cane lane. So those are all from Minju's shop called Honey Quilt on Etsy. Now, I think that is all for today. So I want to thank you so much for watching this episode of The Quilted Story. And if you like something that, if you like what you've seen here, give me a thumbs up and hit that little red subscription button so that you can be notified when I have a new video come up. And just remember, at the end of the day, pull out that sewing machine or your embroidery machine and create something perfect just for you. And you will be so glad that you did because there is no better feeling than being able to create something with your own hands. Now, I'm hoping to be back within the next two weeks and we will see you then. Thank you very much and have a great day, guys.